I'm happy to be able to talk today about the experience I had with the SIRNA clinical trial. And before I begin, I just wanted to remind everybody that I am not a doctor, I am not a scientist, but this is indeed just a patient's viewpoint. Before I say more details about what's going on, I wanted to first let you know that my opinion of this whole experience was what a privilege. Um, when we first receive FDA approval, the first part of January 2008, I remember just getting the news and just being overwhelmed with emotion of gratitude and thankfulness for the people that have gotten us to this point. And I even thought, I don't even care if this experiment works. I, am, I just never thought that in my lifetime I would see the day when we would be having a clinical trial in a human being for PC. It was just incredible. I hope that everybody here can just catch the excitement of, of what this means for all of us to be here. Um, just in the beginning of this presentation, I'd like to show you just a little clip, a video clip that kind of sums up what happened in this clinical trial. And you can just watch it and see it's pretty self-explanatory.
Okay, so um, just for the sake of not repeating too much, during the trial, a few things consistently happened. At home, I collected shavings from my calluses twice a week, and I put those in vials so that they could be tested for RNA. I also kept a pain diary daily about my symptoms. Um, at the clinic, I went to the clinic twice a week, every Monday and every Thursday, and at the clinic, I did a quality of life survey. I had an assessment done of my PC symptoms and my general health, and I have to say I was very appreciative to Dr. Leachman throughout the entire trial that I'm sure she was very excited and, and wanted this siRNA to work, but I felt like she always put my health first and foremost. I also had blood draws at certain times throughout the trial. I had photos of my feet and other PC areas taken once a week. Every time I had measurements taken of my PC affected areas, I had um, as an assessment of the injection site for redness, swelling, bruising, any kind of ill effect. Every time Dr. Leachman was checking out my feet to make sure that I was tolerating the, the drugs and the injections all right. And of course I had injections in both feet. So, so this is just a picture of the quality of life survey, no big deal. And here is a snapshot of, of my online pain diary. It's not all of it, but it is something there that you can kind of see what I did a little bit. Uh, here's a picture of Dr. Leachman taking my callus measurements. And I just wanted to say that I loved that um, there were many ways to measure uh, efficacy. The reason I like that is because I just kind of had the thought that I could just show up, do my thing, and there was no pressure for me at all. It was up to the scientists and the doctors to determine whether or not this this drug was working and in which foot. All I had to do was was fill in my diary and do everything they asked me to do and they got to determine what was happening. They got to sort out that information. So that I really like that part of the trial. Well, of course, the biggest part of the clinical trial for me um, was the injections, or were the injections. Each foot was injected in a specific area. One foot was injected with the siRNA, the other with a placebo. No one knows which foot had the drug, not Dr. Leishman, not me, not anybody that was involved with the clinical trial. However, I can tell you that from about day one of the injections, I was quite sure which foot was receiving the siRNA and which foot was receiving the placebo. The, I, I'll just tell you right now, my guess is the right foot. I, it felt absolutely different. And in fact, the, the post-injection pain was much more severe in the right foot than the left foot, sometimes even, especially towards the end of the trial until the next day. The injections were given in a volume and concentration escalation. So every Monday, the, um, the dosage was either increased or the volume was increased. Actually, it was first the volume and then the dose as the trial went along. And finally, the injections were painful. And the only reason I'm commenting on that is um, simply to show that probably injections are not the best way to deliver um, an effective therapeutic in a PC patient. The very first day of the trial, I wasn't very nervous about the injections. I'd actually had shots in my feet before. I was going to receive three blood draws that day and I was a little more nervous about all of those blood draws than I was the injections. I will tell you at this point today, blood draws are nothing. <laughs> they mean nothing to me. The injections were unbelievable. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. And, um, and the only way I can describe it really is you know, you go to the doctor, you have a medical procedure, and it hurts, and it and it's bad. But then you go home, and and it's over, and you and and you're all right. But with this case, I would actually go home, and I'd lay on my bed. I couldn't sleep at night because it was really kind of doing a mental thing with me. It was, it was the the pain was so incredible. It was just unlike anything I'd ever experienced before. From day one. Um, Dr. Leachman tried to help me with things that I could do to cope. 
um, after that very first injection, she we started trying numbing creams. The numbing creams would I'd put on my feet probably an hour before the actual injections, hoping that that numbing medicine would sink down into my feet. But that didn't work too well because the pain was so deep. Um, the, the pain was such that sometimes the needle would go in and it would feel like it was just going to poke clear out the top of my feet. And the pressure was so great that sometimes the, the needle would go in one section of the callus and it would bleed out another section of the callus because the pressure was so great. So the numbing creams, I, I actually used for the whole trial, but they didn't really do much for the pain. They might have helped with the initial poke, but as far as that very deep and excruciating pain that lasted a very long time, didn't do too much. Um, however, about a month into the trial, I think I'd reached a point where I had had enough. I remember just feeling total despair that I because I knew there was no way I was going to quit this trial. There was no way. So I felt despair just knowing that I had to continue, knowing that I wouldn't quit, but not knowing what to do because I just wasn't sure how in the world I would handle the just the incredible pain that was happening. <laughs> so it just sounds so wimpy, but I remember on Valentine's, February 14th, I had finished my injections, and at the end of them, I just said to Dr. Leachman, I hate it, I hate it. And needless to say, I walked out of that office that day with um, a prescription for value in Lortab. And I have never really taken much as far as medications to help my pain. And so I responded very well to those, to that combination. In fact, my, my dosage, uh, dosage of Valium was so low that I had to break the, the pill in half, but it, it made me nice and sleepy. And it was it was great. It I never went back after that. At once I had had that first combination that following Monday, I could handle the pain. It didn't go away. And in fact, no matter how sleepy I was, I was still well. I was actually very wide awake once that first poke occurred and all that needle fishing and wiggling and all that stuff happened. I was wide awake, but I could handle things. I was much more calm about it. They actually, after that first time that I had an injection with Valium and Lortab, Dr. Leachman came the next time with something, uh, well, ankle blocks. You can see right there. You probably saw them in the video earlier that um, these were great. They, um, it was just a, it was just a shot in my ankle that would saturate or numb the nerve that would go down into the area of the foot where I was receiving injections. And sometimes they worked and sometimes they didn't and sometimes they worked only partially. And, but whether they worked or they didn't, the times they did work made it very much worth it for me to have. I really liked having those ankle blocks. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show you everything was, was labeled very well so there was never any question which foot was receiving which um, dose, wh you know, whether it be the placebo. The only person that really knew what, wh what foot was getting the drug was the pharmacist. <laughs> so it was labeled very well, so everything was super careful. This is just a, a picture of me getting the ankle block. You can see it's actually a very small needle. But I have to say one great thing about the ankle block is when I received that shot, I remember just feeling absolutely giddy, thinking, oh, this is just a shot. This is what shots feel like. Because up until that point, I had had kind of some I am a wimp issues. I had I someone stronger or braver or with a better pain tolerance should have been doing this clinical trial instead of me. Um, but when I got those shots in my ankles, sure, they hurt. I mean, there is just a shot. But I just kind of went, oh, it's a shot. And it was so nice for my mental state to realize that shots are not that big of a deal. That what was happening in my feet with the injections was something very different from the typical shot. And that was, that was good for me as I continued the trial. So at that point, you know, once I had some, somewhat of an ankle block plus the, the drugs, the Lortab and Valium combination, I just kind of got a new routine. Well, enough of what happened with the trial as far as set up and, and how it worked. I have been, um, what you really want to know are probably the same questions that I have been asked since the trial, or I guess the trial's not really over. I'm in the washout period. It ends officially on August 
13th, 2008. You have to wait a certain amount of time once you quit having the injections to see what happens to your body afterwards as well. But in this time since I finished the injections, these are the frequently asked questions. So I imagine you would like to know these too. So they are, how are you? Which was very nice. All the kind people that wanted to know how I was doing. What happened? Did the SIRNA work? And are you cured? So let me go ahead and just try to show you through photos. Um, well, I guess I should say try to answer those questions with some photos. So this is a picture of my feet just before the injection started. These are some photos taken in Dr. Leachman's clinic. These are side by side, by side left and right. And the injections were given kind of in the center area of the callus on, the, on that side callus. Three months into the trial, in my opinion, again, this, is, this whole presentation is a patient's viewpoint. I didn't think there was a whole lot of change. You can see where my feet have bled out in areas and, um, or where the injection sites were. There is a little bit of thinning by the big toe on the right foot, um, but overall not a ton. There is some thinning at the bottom of the callus, and honestly, I don't know if that has to do with the injections or if that was just something that my foot did. But that's three months into the trial. Now, I got to tell you, because I, the reason I gave such a background into the pain of the trial is, for one, the scientists and doctors told me that I can't, I couldn't, you know, just slide over that. I needed to actually tell you all that it, about that procedure and how difficult it was. So I don't know that I would have said that, but I did that because they told me to. But, and so, but that was probably good because at this point into the trial, I'll be honest with you, I could care less whether or not it was going to work or not. I just, I was surviving. I was in survival mode. I was just getting it done. And the days that I wasn't involved in the trial, I was busy making up for the days I was out because I was in the trial. So three months into the trial, I don't think a whole lot is happening. So that's April 3rd. Now, three and a half weeks later, I had had my injections on a Thursday. I went on a youth retreat on Friday, so I wasn't looking at my feet at all. Saturday, I was still with all these teenagers. Saturday night, I came home. I was sitting on the edge of my bed, taking off my socks, and I just happened to look down on my foot and this right foot, and I was so surprised to see what I could see. And I called Dave, and I said, Dave, come and look at my foot. And my husband, Dave, came in, and I didn't even have to say what I was looking at. He could totally tell that in that, I call it the bullseye area, but there in the center of that callus, there's a round section that pretty much was gone. And I took a picture, well, several pictures, and none of them I felt like really showed what was going on with my feet. That, well, you know, I, I, you couldn't tell where the line was. And so you can see in this photo here that I used a black magic marker to, to just kind of outline where the 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 callus used to be and you can even see to the right of the right of what I call the bullseye where it's kind of crusty and flaking and needless to say I was very excited but I was still nervous because I thought oh what if this is a fluke so I went to bed the next morning I woke up checked my foot still gone in fact it was looking even a little better um, and that night I think is actually when I took the pictures it was a Sunday night I took those pictures and I emailed them off to Dr. Leachman and also to Mary Schwartz because I was very excited. So based on that, what happened next? Well, we chose to extend the trial for two weeks. The trial was set to end, but now all of a sudden something was happening, so we chose to extend the trial for two weeks. Um, however, within a week or so, the callus started growing in again. I was disappointed to say the least because I thought that once that callus started to thin out, it would just continue to go back, to go away, and it didn't. And so when it started growing back, I couldn't believe it. So this is important, and on May 10th, all the IPCC members, anybody involved in this trial pretty much, went to Japan and China to discuss the trial and what to do next based on what had happened and, and also knowing that the callus had grown in. And while they were all gone, one doctor remained behind for several days. He was set to join them too, but on May 13th, Dr. Hansen gave me my very last injection of the trial. And that was a Tuesday. It was a different day than a Monday, but it was a Tuesday. 
and I didn't expect anything different. And then May 14th, that evening, the, the next day after the trial, I looked down at my feet again, and sure enough, that bullseye area had thinned out to pink skin again. And again, you can see where I used the magic marker, but I probably didn't even need to use that because you can actually see the jagged edge of where my callus used to be and where it meets the good skin. And again, look at the top um, of that callus, not the top of it, but to the side of where the bullseye went. It's more than the top of the picture. You can see the consistency of the callus has, has changed there as well. Why I was a little bit cautious, and I turn to this next slide so you can see the side by side. This right foot has always been a more fat and wide, I guess I should say, than the left foot anyway. But this was happening, and everybody that knew anything about this trial was in China at that point trying to make decisions based on their limited knowledge. And in the meantime, I am home by myself with no doctors and scientists monitoring me going, something is happening to my feet. So of course I took pictures, this is three days later. I took pictures and sent them off to anybody I thought would be receiving email in China and um, luckily they all got them so that they could see what was happening to me. Here's another side by side, three days later. Um, you can see the bullseye area on the right side is still nice and beautiful pink. In fact, not only is it beautifully pink, it's starting to blend in with um, the regular feet. You can hardly see the edge of that round part there. But you can also see at the bottom of that callus or the bottom half of the callus where kind of chunks have been pulling out, like Velcro almost. They would, I could peel them off. And, and that sore is becoming very, or that callus, I guess I should say, is becoming very thin. And also at the top on the toe. I wanted to show this picture because one thing that was very hard about photographs during the trial is, um, is, is measuring depth, the height, because I was trimming. And so there's no really way to say this is getting thinner or not. But I think this is a pretty good example from my, if you can see my left foot, that's trimmed down about as far as it can go. But you can see how much thinner my right foot is. And you can also see that nice big gouge in the bottom part of the callus where that, where those pieces have come out. And it's just getting thinner and thinner down there. You can also see the bullseye area. It's a nice big round size. Well, big enough. It's about the size of a dime where that callus is completely gone. So that's May 17th, May 18th. I love these pictures These uh, on May 18th. Um, the callus has grown incredibly thin. And here's one more that I think is it's better even. The callus has gotten so, so thin that I can't even trim it anymore. I can't pumice, I, I can't trim it with a razor blade, nothing. I hope you can, I don't know if the if the I see what I I see what I see in the photograph here because I was looking at it with my my naked eyes I guess I should say but I look at that and I so I realize that there is nothing below that you can see a little bit of the flaky stuff but it has gotten just incredibly thin it's very exciting I wanted to show this picture because we re had some really hot temperatures in Utah at that time and you can probably see from my heels, my feet get very sore during the heat. They bleed out. It's, it's a tough time for PC eaters, many of us with heat. And I really like that because on the right foot, it hung in there. It was, it was, it was fine. Ten days later, however, um, of course, I'm not taking the, the injections anymore. The bullseye area on that right foot is still looking pretty good. But already to me, that callus where it was getting super duper thin looks to me like it's growing back in again. It's still thin, up, you know, by the big toe, but that main callus part to me is growing back in. And you can see, it's it, I, I, I'm not getting injections. I don't know when the injections occurred to make that, to, to have made that callus thin out so much, but it's not happening anymore. And June 26, this is a just a picture from Dr. Leachman's lab or her clinic. It, everything to me is grow growing back in. And July 3rd, this is just a picture taken out on a patio. But everything to me is back to normal except the very bottom of the callus. And I'm not sure exactly, again, if that's related to the trial, 
to the siRNA or if that is just the pattern of my foot, but the thinning out is definitely gone. So in conclusion, how are you? Well, I'm alive. And, you know, people, I say that to people and they laugh, but the truth is one of the main reasons for this clinical trial was to prove safety um, of this siRNA in a human being. And I'm alive. To my knowledge, there are were no known side effects. I did say that there was some pain, more severe pain in my right foot than my left foot, um, but I tolerated the drug and the injections very well. No redness, no swelling, no nothing. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, what happened? Well, a sad thing is the RNA samples didn't show a change, and we realized that the reason that did that is because the only way I could get samples were of calluses. And as long as I had callus, it was going to show the mutant gene. It wasn't going to change as long as there was callus. And when there was pink skin, beautiful, wonderful skin, I couldn't get a shaving. Well, I couldn't tell improvement in the pain overall. But of course, there was no pain where the callus was gone. In that bullseye area, of course, there was no pain. Um, but I'm probably like a lot of other people with PC that when your feet hurt, in one area, it spreads to the other feet, up the ankles, up the calves, you know. So it was really hard for me to distinguish pain levels from foot to foot. However, part of the right foot callus went away. Then it filled in after a week or so. Then it went away again. Then it filled in for good since the trial was over. I didn't expect it once the trial was over. I didn't expect um, at this point for it to keep disappearing. It probably would have been nicer, but I didn't expect it either since I knew I was no longer getting injections. I didn't have that hope. But that's basically what happened. Did the siRNA work? Yes, absolutely. Again, a patient's viewpoint, but I think it did. For the first time in my life, I had beautiful pink skin in a section where there's always been callus. And something happened in my right foot callus that's never happened before in my whole life. Never. And so to me, it, it's not coincidence. It happened. Are you cured? Huh, sorry, no. It's just a treatment. This trial is the first step. Um, we need a better way to deliver the siRNA. You know, you heard my whole background, my whole sob story of how awful the injections were. But we really do need a better way to deliver it. I would like to see, again, a patient's viewpoint. I would like a way to consistently deliver the drug in the right place. Sometimes the injections would go in in a certain spot and hit a certain layer, and, and, and Dr. Leachman couldn't get the needle in any farther, and so she'd have to wiggle around. And so, and how do you know that it was, how do we know that it was getting in the right layer every time? And so I think you know, to, to be able to administer something, we know right where it's going. And of course, I wish for something to uniformly treat the entire foot. Just for example, my oldest son just came back from scout camp and he walked like crazy at this scout camp and he had blisters all over the place, uh, in his toes, on top of his feet. And for us to have a treatment that would really be effective for PC patients is to find something that would get all those areas, not just an area where um, one place is being targeted, but something that would affect the whole feet. And again, just a reminder that siRNA is one of the possible pathways to successful treatment for PC. At this patient support meeting, we have heard very exciting possibilities for a good treatment for PC. And whether siRNA is the best one, we don't know. Some of these other ones look maybe better or just as good and which one is going to be the best for all of us we're not sure um, but this is definitely a very promising looking one and I hope that as you've seen the photos and listen to me talk today that you will catch the the excitement of of really what's happened that that something was delivered it was safe and that something truly did happen and now we got to find a, a better way to to get that medicine into our to our feet that that has some kind of quality of life to it as well I would absolutely be remiss if I didn't say thanks to many people. And I will confess, I actually grabbed this um, this slide, I, the information on this slide from the press release that came out at the time of the clinical trial because I wanted to show you how many people collaborated to make this clinical trial possible. Um, I just want to point out a few people, the very top of the list, Dr. Leachman, who took such great care of me, 
during this trial. She gave most of the injections. She is an absolute pro at foot injections, along with David Hansen and Dr. Michael Eli Mark Eliason. Also helping Dr. Leachman in that clinic was Emily Davis, who was a fantastic assistant. And I'm embarrassed I don't know their names, but Christina and Allie, I just love them. Of course, Erwin McLean and Francis Smith. Um, down a little bit, what would we do without Roger Casper and Robin, Robin Hickerson? They are from Transderm. Roger um, developed this or invented this siRNA. He, he made it happen. Robin's done a ton of experience experiments to make it happen. We would be nowhere without those two. They're just incredible. And finally, at the bottom, I just would like to point out the Pachynechia congenita project logo. Mary said I couldn't use her name, and so um, <laughs> so I am just putting the logo on, and hopefully everybody will know that we would be nowhere without without Mary Schwartz um, making this all happen for us. There would be no PC project. There would be no clinical trial. There would be no research registry, no patient support meeting. And um, so I just want to say thank you so much to Mary Schwartz, my wonderful mother-in-law, and again to the many, many people that have given so much of their time and their talents and their careers to make this clinical trial happen. Thank you.